Jill back again with another video. As I mentioned in my last video, I want to take the process of graphite and watercolor on watercolor paper some different places. I have worked with water soluble pencils before, but it's been a little while. I'm a little rusty. I bought these on a good, really good clearance sale, Derwent water soluble sketching. They come in this tin, this nice tin. I already sketched my drawing out. Um, I mostly used the light wash. There's light wa two light wash, two medium wash, two dark wash. I did most of the sketch with the light wash. I added some dark wash in the very darkest places, but normally I just go back in in a second, a second round of drawing. So I've sketched it out. You can see the paper has so much texture. I hope the water soluble process will smooth that out make it more like watercolor, even though it's graphite. See, I can tell already it takes away all, all of that texture. And it really goes quickly. I'm going to leave this part real time. I also find when I work this way, it gives me a much looser drawing. Looser. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's not so tight and controlled. It's more painterly. You kind of get what you get often. You'll notice I rinse out, dab off. Some of the excess water to smooth some of these areas out so I don't end up with super harsh lines. I tried to leave the towel and the water jar in the picture frame so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I do enjoy any water soluble materials. If you've watched my videos, I love inks that move around, markers that move around. I lost half of her nose there. No worries, we can go back in and add more graphite to define whatever we lose. I like the look of her already. You'll find a whole lot of graphite builds up on your brush and at times that's good. You can use that heavy deposit somewhere else to make a dark area, but often I just need to get it off or I end up with too much all over her face. can see where I put the dark dark wash pencil there's a bubble here on her face I got to get off maybe I should have given you some close-ups at the beginning of what it looked like with that graphite on the texture paper next time Not bad, not bad at all. And let me tell you, that was a quick sketch. I probably only spent less than 10 minutes on that sketch. It was rough. I got a drip there. 
it's not as touchy as watercolor. Watercolor, if you got a drip there, you, it'd be, it'd be ruined. Okay, so I just gave you a still shot to show you where where we stand right now. I like her so much, I hate to do anything. I'm afraid to ruin her. I also moved the camera down really close so maybe you can see better exactly what I'm doing. I'm going back in with the dark wash just to add some definition in places. I find if you don't wet the uh, water-soluble graphite, it stays very shiny, so I will need to try and wet it. I'm just going to hit some of these dark places, bring back her nose a little bit. Not a lot. I, I, I absolutely love her mouth. I think I'm going to leave her mouth alone. And I'm going to put in some dark right here. Here. I think that's about it. I'm going to wet my brush. Not a lot of water in it at all. Just go over some of those areas. said I wasn't going to touch her mouth and then I did. Oh, my hand's shaky. I messed up the chin line a little bit, but oh well. That dark in her, in these shadows, is really coming out dark. Let's see if it dries a little lighter. I wanted to give a little bit of definition in her neck, but I don't know if it's working. Smooth out some of those lines. Okay. I think that's good for her face. Except maybe. Hmm. I'm going to grab a medium pencil medium wash and add a little bit of depth here in the end of her nose. Get a clean brush. Soften that line just a little bit. Okay. I think her face is done. Let's let that dry and I'll be back with the next step. All right, let's see if we can make this work with my board on an angle and my palette here. I have it kind of taped to the board so it doesn't slide off right into my lap. <laughs> let's see what happens. Okay, so for the background, I'm gonna try and be, not the background, but, she, but her scarf and her hair and, and the background and her clothing. I'm going to try and go looser this time. And let's start with this. She's wearing a great big thick scarf. So first I'm going to take a giant brush and wet the whole area first. Make sure that paper is nice and saturated.
Okay, I'm back. This is where we stand. Um, filming this video in bits and pieces every morning before I go to work. That's the only way I can get this done this week. So yesterday I did the watercolor and then I let it dry and later at night after work I did all of the pen work in the scarf. I love doing that kind of work and I'm really pleased the scarf and the hat with how that turned out. That was just my Uniball, Uniball Vision pen. I figured you didn't need to see me do that. That's long and tedious. Even sped up it's kind of tedious. But we have a problem. Let me show you right there. See my blue watercolor? I splashed it. And I would love to leave her hair white just like this. I think it's very striking, but I can't. Not with that little dot there. That's all I can see. And there is no way that I know of to get a dot of blue <laughs> out of a white area of a painting. So now I have to do something with her hair. Uh, for 24 hours it's been wearing me. What do I do? I thought about just lining her hair out with pencil. It would be nice. It would be a nice tone with the face, not overpowering. It would still be somewhat like negative space. I had done this one as a mock-up earlier, and I did it with fountain pen. Um, this was just a, a quickie in my journal to get ready for this painting. But I don't, I don't like that brown in her hair. I don't like the way it looks. So then I thought, well, I have these pit shades of gray pen. I, and they're brush pens, and I could do, and let me show you my little mock-up. This, this is how I was trying to decide. So this is the gray, right? It would be somewhat the same tone as her face. Uh, I don't know. I even thought about just taking blue and uh, this bright green and spattering it around here and making it look purposeful. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't like that look either. But check out this. This is a scrap of Arches watercolor paper, by the way. This is an elegant writer. So I did some really super fast lines with an elegant writer and wet, wet it. And when you wet and dab it, I'll show you later, it brings up these shades of pinky, purple, and blue that I think are shades that are in my painting. So I think I'm going with that. I will do the line work off camera. I will probably see you again tomorrow morning. Okay, I'm back, and that was easy. Uh, the lines went on really quickly. If you're not familiar with an elegant writer pen, there are many really nice videos on YouTube on beautiful things you can do with this. Um, I have done some work before, but I don't think I've ever made a video using it. I'm not sure. So let's see. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wet sections and dab it off with a paper towel. What I'm afraid of is using the same paper towel twice and transferring the ink somewhere it doesn't need to be on her face, so I made this whole little stack of towels. All right, I'm gonna try and move really quickly. Let's see how this goes. So, wet my brush. Not quite wet enough. It's gotta be enough water to activate the ink. And now, There we go. I will use that towel on something else. Don't worry, it won't go to waste. Wet my brush again. And I have to think carefully about where I want this activated. I only want it randomly in places so it looks somewhat loose. Let's see. 